Hi guys, my name is Patrick from Amped Cycling and today we're going to talk about how I modified this e-scooter which is from Lidl and how you can do it too. So here's the scooter again from another angle. The purpose of this hack is to increase the top speed which is limited from the factory. To do this we need two components, one which is a controller, looks like this, and the other part is a new display. This is optional but it's quite nice because it gives Bluetooth functionality. This is the old part which I pulled out. I should ex say as well that before going any further it's possible that in your country or area that modifying the top speed of a scooter is illegal or it's limited by law so please don't do this or do it on private land so keep that in mind so if you modify it it's your responsibility so first step we're going to modify is the controller so to do this we need to take out the old controller now I won't actually go through all the steps but I will show you how I did it on mine so we need to open the battery bay battery pops out and in here we have this which is the contact terminal for the battery so when I turn this it allows the battery to be released and this these are the pins where the battery contacts the other components of the scooter now what you have to do is First of all, take this out. There's two screws to hold it in place. And then it comes like this. There's a couple of wires. You also need to disconnect them. Then from here, you need to disconnect the locking mechanism, which will allow you to get access to here, where is a plastic plate. Now, on the other side of this is the controller itself. So you need to take this, this, and then finally this out. Then you will get to the controller, which again looks like this. This is the old one which I took out. And you finally have it loose. So now we come to the next step, which is to actually access these wires so you can disconnect them. So here on the front, we have a plastic cover. Now there's four holes here, here, here and here and these are quite thin so you're going to need a small screwdriver with a thin top to it i used a, a long phillips that's just quite narrow um, these are cross screws but a phillips will also do the job don't use a manual uh, or don't use an electric drill rather because i, I noticed the drill bits are a bit too wide and it'll damage the plastic and you know if you want to keep your scooter looking neat and tidy it's not a good idea they're a bit tricky to get out that's why I mentioned them you might have to move the front wheel out of the way so just do it slowly and then this entire cover pops off then you will see that there's wires coming down this tube and you can see them here so what you're gonna do next is you've obviously at this point got all these parts out you actually push the controller forwards which exposes the wires here on the front and then you can simply disconnect them there's all these plastic clips like this there's one two three four five six I believe seven maybe so you just basically go through all of them each of them are covered in insulation so so from here and the other terminal, there's insulation over the whole lot. You just simply cut them with a scissors, cut the insulation off, disconnect them. And then finally, you will be able to pull the old controller out through the battery bay. So that's the old controller out. And then what you need to do is take your new controller, your placement controller, which enables a higher top speed. Um, I'll put a link in the description and this will then allow you to hit those higher speeds. So once you slot in the new controller, um, technically you're ready to go. 
you should do everything in reverse you just simply reconnect all the pins be sure to take photographs of all these parts as you go along through the process because it's very easy to get confused when you're putting it back together again especially if you don't do it all in one sitting you might forget which wire connects to what so just take photographs and, and document it carefully it's also a good idea to retape it with electrical tape or heat shrink wrap um, to make sure that the connection is solid you can see this is the old wrap on one of them here um, so retape it again or use heat shrink to make sure that no water can get in and the connection is solid so when you put it back together you won't have any headaches so yeah so you just do all the process in reverse also one other thing I noticed was that on the replacement controller there was a metal plate like this attached like this and when the plate was on it actually didn't fit it was too wide so what I simply did was I was luckily able to unscrew this and then the controller was able to slot in the old position also it slots on this other side of this plastic cover so make sure you put it back in the same way as you found it um, again documented with pictures it's a good idea then you won't be guessing what you have to do on the way back so then you simply re-screw everything back together re-screw on the plastic plate um, and yeah technically you're ready to go but we'll keep going because there's a nice exciting feature that we can add with the replacement display as well so here is the default display uh, cover so to replace the display you simply pop this cover off use a flat plastic item like what you'd use to open an iPhone for example or another smartphone cover and just carefully wedge it in on both sides and just slowly wiggle it up and it just pops off then the old display which I have here this will be exposed so there's gonna be three screws here here and here and you simply just unscrew them and then it loosely comes up now it's still connected with these wires so what you do is uh, again similar to the controller you disconnect these connections um, again cutting off the insulation and um, this wire you actually have to cut and solder um, so it's a little bit of work but it's not that difficult you just need to make sure that you solder it carefully back um, and then the, the purpose of doing this modification is that the default controller doesn't come with Bluetooth connectivity so the new one does again I'll put a link in the description to the new one and that allows you then you can you could have a smartphone mounted on your handlebars which shows your current speed it allows you to do really cool things like um, um, set how aggressive uh, the acceleration is you can turn on and off whether the scooter will start from a standing start or whether you need to kick off and it needs to be traveling before it actually um, the motor kicks in there's all kind of clever tweaks you can do but you need Bluetooth for that and this doesn't have Bluetooth so that's the reason uh, you replace the display um, it's much easier than the controller luckily there, it's only just this one piece really that's in the way and uh, then the bit of soldering of course but um, then that's it much easier than the controller and it's optional but it's really nice to have so I do recommend it so that's the video guys I hope you enjoyed it if you have any comments uh, questions please let me know below and uh, see you in the next video